Well, as more businesses reopen, showing proof of vaccination may become more common here in California. Only your paper vaccination card is required right now, but public health officials have said that the program will likely become digital. Now, joining us now to talk more about uh, why this uh, is stirring up so much controversy, these vaccine passports, is attorney Jamie Wright. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. So first, give us your point of view on these so-called COVID-19 vaccine passports. You know, it's very interesting marketing around the language, I and mean, we're really talking about just proof of vaccination. There's going to be some challenges simply because there's going to be a digital divide, particularly for those who are poor in communities of color and between those who have already been immunized and those who don't. There also may be some HIPAA concerns strictly because if you're putting your information into an app, which is what we're talking about with the COVID-19 vaccination passport, how then do you protect the data from hackers? So, so that is uh, an interesting thought here as well. Uh, but I do want to get to this point. Some worry that this will affect uh, someone's uh, freedom when they get a chance. Uh, you, you know, when you, when you start having to present your ID and so forth to just go to everyday activities. What are your thoughts when it comes to to having this vaccine passport for that? Well, that's the, that's a fair point. There's about a billion people in the world overall that don't have either a driver's license, a passport, and or social security number or a birth certificate. Excuse me, birth certificate. So, how do you then prove who you are? And then, can those files within the passport be used to say prosecute someone? How much access will law enforcement have to them? There's a lot of concerns surrounding, surrounding the privacy here on this passport, and that's something that we have to be concerned about and really consider. So, so now that California is going to be moving ahead to provide some sort of, of uh, vaccine passport, can you head that off or do you have to just go through with the getting the passport process and kind of taking care of the legal processes afterward? So Governor Newsom has said as of his last statement that he was not going to force that. It's also not going to be forced on the federal level. Now, some employers, particularly mm -hmm. state employers or government employers, can force it and it also can be forced for events. So that is something that you can challenge, particularly if you have a disability. So you may, may be able to make a claim under the Americans with Disabilities Act. And, and so is this much different, though, than getting your vaccination? You're required to have these vaccinations when you enter school and you're required to show that proof of vaccination. Is this much different than that, though? Some would present that argument. Uh, it's, it's, it depends on the perspective that you're looking at it from. There is case law from the Supreme Court from 1905 regarding smallpox that says that states can be fined um, for not forcing this. Um, on the other side of that, I think there's still these privacy concerns that we really have to consider, particularly surrounding HIPAA. So I think from a government perspective, there's definitely going to be um, a push for this. However, from the private sector perspective, depending on if you're an employer or you're just attending an event or you're an individual citizen, you might have a little more leeway. All right. Jamie Wright, attorney, sharing some uh, insight with us uh, regarding the uh, vaccine par passport, which is uh, controversial in some parts of the country. Uh, the governor of Florida even uh, making it uh, illegal to have a vaccine passport um, there in that state. But uh, this state is it's operating much differently. Jamie, thank you so much for your insight this afternoon. Thank you so much.